that's a very nice flounder you've caught there. Off to a good start. Look at this beautiful flounder. Nice and thick one too. Good weight to that, yeah. Now this fish, eyes on top of the head, is designed to sit flat on the bottom of the sea. They shuffle in, cover themselves with sand, and then they pop up and ambush what happens to be drifting past. Now, the funny thing about these is that when they're born small, they'll look like a normal fish with an eye on each side of the head. But as they mature, the eye slowly creeps around to rest next to the other one, and they end up swimming this way. I'm going to leave expert Helen and her teammate Pam to the fishing and get cooking this flounder in a rich, buttery shrimp caper and herb sauce. I've gutted this flounder, which is very different uh, to other fish, which you normally cut up the belly, but with flatfish, all the guts are held up just behind the head, so you make a little incision here and just scoop it out with a finger. Sadly, this flounder is too big for the pan I've got. I love serving fish whole. Sorry, little fish, that I have to uh, derobe you. There's a lot of meat behind the head here, so I don't want to just go chopping through. I want all of that meat, so cut carefully around the head. There we go. I'm just going to put a little salt in the flour. Turning the flounder in seasoned flour will make it nice and crispy when it fries in the butter. So that's ready to go in the pan. So I'm just going to start the flounder off with a little bit of oil. The butter will go in later. Hopefully this will start sizzling straight away. Very, very hot pan. Put it in and then leave it alone. Thinly slice two cloves of garlic and finely chop a handful of licorice dill. And lastly, some fantastic little peel brown shrimps. So it's a brown shrimp, dill and caper butter. Turn the sizzling flounder and add a good knob of butter. It should go a wonderful hazelnut colour and actually it'll taste a bit nutty too. Barbecuing isn't always about putting things on the grill. You can use a pan on top of the grill and the wonderful thing is that it's the smoke going into the food that lends such a wonderful taste. It's almost as if the charcoal smoke is an ingredient in itself. The girls are still fishing, but I've just got a text saying that they've actually got a golden grey mullet. But in the meantime, I'm going to crack on. Um, I'm going to put some capers into the butter, about a couple of small spoonfuls. Really, really wonderful capers and flatties. Here come the girls with the second course of mullet. Time to finish the first dish. With my very high-tech stove, I'm now going to um, ramp up the heat a bit. Ow! I'm going to finish off the sauce. so. Out comes our splendid flounder. In goes the garlic. In goes the brown shrimp. I'm now going to chuck in the dill. And lastly, the lemon juice. A little taste here. Absolutely glorious. Are you hungry now? We are starving. Fishing does always make you hungry, doesn't it? It does. Right, come on, tuck in. That looks lovely. Get involved. Get lots of capers, get lots of shrimps. Mm. Oh. oh, I like that. That is lovely. I've never tasted flounder like that. I've always had it very plain. It's really beautiful. It's just so fresh. Any fresher and you'd have to spank it. You would. <laughs> Pam. Oh, yeah, thank you.